So look, I really appreciate you guys coming to Cisco campus and I'm actually really excited about the topic we're gonna hit. Uh, my name is Jeff Reed. I'm leading the enterprise networking business here at Cisco. So a lot of you here around the room and probably out there on, on the web, uh, it's catalyst switching, ISR, ESR 1K routing, wireless LAN, as well as what we're doing in terms of prime infrastructure at the management layer and on the SDN layer as well. And so I just want to do a quick intro and before we get into this topic and talk about, you know, kind of key things that we're focused on with respect to enterprise networking uh, and kind of a lead in to the topic du jour. So if you look at you know, what we're doing here in our, in within the enterprise networking group, there's a few kind of critical transitions that we're, we're, we're driving in the market. Uh, so one's the mobility. Uh, hopefully maybe you guys can come back and we can talk about all the things we're doing with respect to the mobility you know, platform. Uh, you know, really the move to wireless is the primary mode of connectivity for our users, devices, et cetera. Uh, big focus with respect to the, the, you know, the new .11 AC Wave 2, uh, but also looking at you know, how do we use the, the wireless network uh, for analytics for other information across the infrastructure. So that's kind of you know, transition number one we're focused on. Um, second one is around security. So you know, we think that there's a huge opportunity to use the network to like vastly improve the security of, of enterprises. And, and both the, the network as you know, improved visibility, you know, if you think of, if you see what, you know, what's going on in the security space, you know, so many of these advanced persistent threats or you know, zero day attacks, you know, they're gonna get into the infrastructure. You know, at some point, you know, their things are gonna get in. So how can we leverage the network to identify where the security issues have, have come and as well as leverage the, the network to ensure that when that happens, we contain the issue as much as possible. Um, but the third big topic is the one we're gonna talk about today, and, and really the one that's kind of near and dear to my heart, is around what we're, what we're seeing with respect to SDN, and, and really kind of thinking about how does the network fundamentally change how it operates. Um, this is kind of near and dear to my heart because one of the products we talk about here, APKM, is something I started uh, a few years ago here at Cisco. Um, and it wouldn't, a little take me back. So I was running the, uh, the catalyst switching uh, organization here, here at Cisco. And, and what I saw was, you know, we, we have actually really, really interesting technology we're driving in kind of all aspects of the networking, you know, portfolio. Um, but a real challenge in, in terms of the ability for our users, for our customers to be able to adopt that technology. And frankly, even a little bit of a challenge for us to build that technology. And you look at how you know, networks were, have, have been operating for years, you know, it's highly manual, you know, box by box. And, and what we saw is, you know, frankly, you know, not nearly the uptake rate of new technology that I was hoping to see from basically all the R&D that we were spending. And when I looked at it, you know, kind of fundamentally it came down to a couple issues. One is just too hard, um, you know, too manual, you know, too, you, we didn't have, you know, if you look at, you know, kind of the best practices in terms of, you know, how the different layers of the infrastructure stack have evolved, you know, we lacked an abstraction layer at the network, um, you know, and, and so there's a real issue I saw in terms of the, the ability to kind of consume capabilities, uh, the network layer. And the second one was actually just fundamentally, it was harder for us to build. You think about, you know, we were doing too many things at the embedded OS layer on the device. So if you wanted a new capability, that's great, but you're gonna have to go update, you know, iOS across all your, you know, routing infrastructure. That's really hard. Um, and frankly, it's sometimes it's also harder to build in that embedded OS environment than it is to build on a, you know, kind of a, you know, a controller, you know, a different layer of the network where I can use, you know, kind of, you know, the best and latest in terms of software development process, um, you know, continuous in integration, continuous deployment, tool sets, tool chains, et cetera, to really speed the ability for us to, to, to deliver, deliver and develop. Um, so kind of out of that spawned this idea that, you know, we kind of fundamentally should rethink how we're building networks uh, in terms of what functionality should live at the device layer, uh, what functionality should we push to kind of a controller layer, and even over time, what functionality should live in the cloud. And, and that's kind of been the, kind of the fundamental paradigm shift in, in terms of how we're looking internally and how we architect new solutions moving forward. Um, and we think this has a lot of really great implications for customers in terms of the ease of deployment. And when I look at this, it's kind of funny, you know, 
in some ways we've done this in wireless today and I, and I, and I can actually look at like feature adoption in switching and routing versus wireless and it's fastest in wireless. And I think kind of fundamentally a lot of that's because we do a lot of that feature development at the controller layer. And you know, yes, it can, you know, we, we can improve the way that we update wireless LAN controllers, but you know, you don't have to Model. update that many wireless LAN controllers Model. typically within an enterprise to be able to get the latest and greatest. Okay. And I think we have the opportunity to do very similar things here. Um, and so you know, we really started this effort, um, you know, kind of focused at looking you know, external to data center. You know, SCN was already kind of moving in the data center, but how can we apply these types of principles to the enterprise network? Uh, and that's what started, you know, what we call APKM, the controller layer. And it's interesting, you know, kind of, we started this right, I think, around the time that the kind of concept around SD-WAN started coming in as well. And, and we've done a lot of the work with respect to the plumbing you needed to do to make SD-WAN work well. Um, but we didn't, we hadn't really thought about how do we make it more manageable? How do we automate that? How do we, you know, really kind of fundamentally improve how you would take and deploy SDN WAN. And so it's funny, these efforts actually kind of came together uh, over the past you know, year. And, and so what we'll do today is really talk through what we're talking about with respect to how we see the SDN the SD WAN space. But I want you to kind of think through because a lot of these design principles around what we're thinking about, we're talking about overlays, et cetera, I think are things that you, we can extend broadly across the enterprise network. Um, so this is kind of, I see kind of almost proof point one of this architectural shift that we're making that you'll see the, you come to fruition kind of broadly across the, the product uh, space that I have responsibility for. Make sense? A little high level? I know it's pretty, pretty high level. You probably, all right, let's get to the beef. Um, so, so with that, uh, I'll hand it over to Samath. Who will and Pedro? You guys are the you're like the the boot. Oh, that's frightening. <laughs> um, we don't need to watch that video. Um, all right, so let's get to actual real real technical discussions. And but once again, I really thank you guys for coming, and uh, I can't wait to hear the the results and your feedback after the session.